In this video, we are discussing Stripe Radar, and I'm going to share some custom rules to help you cut down on credit card fraud, while at the same time ensure you aren't blocking legitimate transactions accidentally. Hi, I'm Hans Sarah Canifel for eCommerce Grilla. In a previous video, we covered reducing credit card fraud and chargebacks using internal processes. Now, in this video, I wanna go over Stripe's anti-fraud service called Radar, and some of the custom rules that I use to help reduce fraud and chargebacks for my clients. To be clear, I have no affiliation with Stripe. I make no money from Stripe. I just find their platform is well developed and have found it to be a good fit for my clients over the years, especially for smaller businesses and startups. So what is Stripe Radar? In essence, Radar is a fraud prevention platform integrated directly into the Stripe payment platform that utilizes machine learning to detect and block fraudulent transactions. If you're using Stripe's standard payment account, you get access to Radar at no additional cost for transactions you process through the platform. If you're not on the standard plan, they provide reasonable rates. For new and smaller businesses, this is an amazing safety net as it works right out of the box without any extensive training period of the fraud prevention algorithms. With the Radar platform, you also have the ability to run transactions that are flagged as high risk through 3D Secure 2 to add additional fraud protection. 3D Secure 2 is the next generation of the highly effective 3D Secure standard, which you most likely know by its branded names of Visa Secure, MasterCard Identity Check, or American Express Safe Key. Through the use of custom rules, you can easily target transactions you feel warrant additional scrutiny and run them through 3D Secure. This allows you to safeguard high value products or services that are more likely a target for fraud. Before we move on, if you found this video helpful so far, Hit that like button, it really does help the channel, and subscribe and ring the notification bell to get notified when we release new videos. Thank you, now on with the show. While Radar does a good job of adding additional fraud protection out of the box, there are times when you want rules that apply specifically to your business or service, and this is where custom rules come in. As a note, the default Radar setup is a generalization, which, while very effective, should be, in my assessment, stricter. So let's get into creating our custom rules. Stripe provides some great references and the radar interface itself provides great examples and resources for creating rules. So if you get stuck, those are some great resources and I'll link to the Stripe documentation in the description. As we walk through these rules, I'm gonna be showing you the rule logic and also describing the intent of each rule in plain English. So you can use your own assessment of whether or not the rule applies to your business model. Because we live in the times we do, here is a disclaimer. These are merely the rules I recommend, and this is not intended as a consultation or advice specifically for your individual business. To start, I recommend leaving all the default rules in place as they provide a firm foundation upon which to build our custom rule set. The radar rule set is broken down into four sections, which are request 3D secure, allow, block, and review. Rules are processed in a specific order. First rules for 3D Secure are processed before any rules for allow, block, and review. After which, a transaction goes through the remainder of the rule sections. You can view the sections as a filter. If a transaction matches the criteria of the current block, it won't be passed on to subsequent sections. The allow section. These are rules that allow a payment to be processed. Payments that fall under the allow rules aren't evaluated against the block or review rules. I would recommend against placing too many rules in the allow section, as it's almost always better to force payments to run through the gauntlet of exclusion rules with few notable exceptions, which we'll cover later. Block section. These are rules that block a transaction. Block transactions are not evaluated against the review rules. Review section. These are rules that allow transactions to be processed, but then place them in a manual review status or hold status. When writing a radar rule, the structure has two components, the action the rule should take and the condition to evaluate the rule. Starting out are the 3D Secure rules I think all merchants should have. Request 3D Secure if card country is not equal to IP country. This rule forces the card to go through 3D Secure authentication process if the country code on the IP address of the individual entering the card details does not match the same country as the credit card's issuing bank. For example, the customer IP address placing the order was from France, but the card was issued from a bank in South Africa. They would be required to go through the 3D Secure process. 
There are numerous legitimate reasons why an IP address and card issuing country might not match. This is why we place the rule in the request 3D secure instead of the block rule set. You don't want to lose profitability by blocking legitimate transactions. Request 3D secure if amount in US dollars is greater than 45 and risk level is not equal to normal. This rule checks to see if a transaction is more than 45 US dollars and if the radar platform identifies the risk level of the transaction as abnormal. It will require a customer then to go through the 3D secure authentication for the transaction. This is where the machine learning of the radar platform starts to shine, as it can use numerous fraud risk identifiers and place a transaction in a risk matrix to make evaluations about potential fraud. The $45 is just a placeholder. You can set this to any level you feel begins to be in the target range of fraudulent transactions for your business. You can also use any currency you like in the filter and more information on currencies can be found in the radar documentation. You could push all abnormal risk levels into 3D Secure with request 3D Secure if risk level is not normal, but bear in mind, each step you place in a customer's conversion path is another opportunity for abandonment. By using the risk level in conjunction with a minimum dollar amount, you get the best of both worlds, a smooth conversion funnel, while limiting high dollar fraud. We're now onto the allow rules. Without a good business specific reason, I only enable one extra rule, allow if payment is authenticated with 3D Secure and has a liability shift. What this rule does is if a transaction has been processed through the 3D Secure rule set and passed, it should be allowed to be completed. Block transaction rule set. Besides the default activated rules, we want to ensure we enable the following default rules. Block if CVC verification fails and block if zip code verification fails. These rules require that both the CVC, the security code on the card, and the zip code or postal code on the building address match that of the card. Block if disposable email and is anonymous IP. This rule uses Stripe's internal list of disposable email providers and then checks to see if the IP address attempting to make the purchase is using a known list of Tor networks or proxies to mask their actual IP address from the payment gateway. This is a common practice for fraudsters. Block if card country is not equal to IP country. This rule blocks any transactions where the issuing bank country does not match the country of the customer's IP address. Now you might be saying, hey, wait a minute, we tested for this earlier, and you're right. We tested for this in the request 3D secure, and then approved all valid 3D secure authentications in the allow rule set. Here, we are now blocking all orders that did not pass the 3D secure validation. Block if is disposable email and card funding equals to prepaid. This rule checks if the customer is using a disposable email account and if the card attempting to make the purchase is a prepaid card. If it is, it blocks the transaction. Block if charge attempts per customer hourly is greater than seven. This rule blocks transactions if more than seven attempts have been made to charge the same customer in the last hour. While seven charges are generally plenty, if you find that your business model has customers that frequently fail at entering card data correctly, you could move this rule to the review rule set so you aren't losing revenue. Block if card country is not US and risk level is not equal to normal. Here we are blocking all transactions that are not against the card from the United States that are not viewed as normal risk level, according to Stripe's radar. You can customize this for your business location by using any two character country code. Now, if you find you have a high level of fraud originating from specific countries, you can block those by using the client IP country block list. Go into this list and add all the countries you wish to block transactions from. A note of caution, if you're operating in the European Union, there are regulations about blocking purchases and payments from member EU states, so check with your legal counsel about any potential restrictions if you're looking to block entire member states. In the review rule set, I use review if risk level equals to elevated, which will process the transaction, but hold it in review for any transaction with a risk level evaluated as elevated in the radar platform. You should also be looking to set a high value limit to automatically hold a transaction for review. This will depend greatly on your business model and its susceptibility to fraud, but choosing a high order amount is a safe strategy. Review if 
amount in US dollars is greater than 350. This rule will still allow customers to check out without impediment. However, it will hold all transactions over $350 for manual review. As I'm sure you're beginning to realize the power in the radar rule set by this point, I'd like to reiterate a previous statement. You are much better off creating rules that block transactions than those that allow them due to the cascade effect of the rule system. If you made it this far, I'd like to say thank you for watching. If you have any questions you'd like answered in an upcoming video, head on over to ecommercegorilla.com forward slash questions and let us know, or leave them in the comments below. If you think someone else would find this video helpful, please share it. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you next time. Oh, hey, you're still here. Maybe you'd be interested in one of our other videos? And uh, if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video. It's right down there. You know this video's done, right? Click on one of the videos over there.